Greetings, golf enthusiasts. It is your fantasy golf sommelier back again for another week. And this week, we are at the AT&T Pro No-Am, as we should call it, because there's no amateurs this week. But you know what? That's okay. We got a fantastic course in Pebble Beach Golf Links, also a little spyglass sprinkled in there. This is going to be a good week. I am excited. Now, this isn't all that good. Not fantastic. But you know what? That's okay. It's another week of golf, and we get to talk some plays of the week and some wine. So before we get into the plays of the week, I'm drinking a little uh, Pinot Noir tonight. Now, no free ads, uh, but this is one of the – this is a staple in my home, and uh, it is uh, – it's something that rhymes with uh, uh, Siomi. Siomi. Yeah, it rhymes with Siomi, but it's a good Pinot Noir, not very expensive. And you know what's interesting about this one is it has a screw cap. Yes, a screw cap. Now, we talked about cork a couple weeks ago, and now we're going to talk a little bit about screw caps this week. And look, don't have that. Don't be all stuck up with your cork and think that just because a wine has a screw cap that it's bad, because you know what? It's not. And don't think see either because you can get some fancy screw cap wines and we'll talk about that here in a minute but let's get into the plays of the week and i am going to start with the ten dollar special yes that is the guy that is priced like a sutter home okay sutter home is cheap wine okay trust me i'm a sommelier i know what i'm talking about and it plays like a canemus which is expensive wine trust me Canis is expensive and it's good. Okay. So that means we got a lot of upside out of this guy. And I'm going with Mr. Brian Gay at 6,600. Now, here's what you're thinking Brian Gay is, it literally doesn't excite me one bit. I don't, I don't want to put Brian Gay in my lineups. Well, look, here's why you put him in your lineups. He's got incredible upside. He's cheap at 6,600. He's a guy that has played extremely well on this course. You look at the last five years, he's made the cut every single year. He's got two top tens in that time frame. The stats are not going to show for him. It's not going to look all that good, but I don't care. I like his course history. here. I like the fact that he's been in pretty good recent form. Look, the guy just won a PGA Tour event in the fall, just a few months ago. So Brian Gay is going to be my $10 special. I'm giving him 84 points. Yes, that just happened. All right, before I talk about the fade of the week, let's get into the screw cap. Now, here's the thing with the screw cap, okay? A lot of what we talk about with wine and how it's capped and how it's sealed with a cork or a screw cap is about oxygen and how it breathes and things like that. Well, one of the things they talk about, here's a, here's a technical term for you. Here's science, okay? Oxygen ingress rates, okay? So now with a, with a cork, you can get a lot of a vari a variable oxygen ingress rates, okay? So it can change a little bit. You can get some bad cork, you can get some good cork or whatever, but it changes that oxygen ingress rate. I'm going to say that a lot. Yeah, O-I-R, okay? So Here's the thing with that. That's what helps the wine grow and become what it is. But you don't want too much oxygen. You don't want not enough, I think. I, know, I could be wrong about that. But anyway, one of the things you get with screw caps is a little bit more consistent, a consistent OIR. Okay, so that's good. That's good. Like I said, with cork, it can be a little bit more variable. It's kind of like we talk about with golf you know, where you have all these varying factors and we don't know what really how to predict golf because, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just difficult. It's the most variable game to predict. So with the cork, it can be a little bit more of a problem. Now, cork has proven over time to be a great sealer of wine, but don't give up on the screw caps, okay? We're learning. Uh, science is coming into play here. We're getting some good uh, data, okay? I really don't know what I just said, other than the fact that screw caps aren't really all that bad and don't just discount them because you, you, you're you stuck up and you think your wine should have some cork, okay? Now, let's talk about the Boone's Farm fade of the week, and that is going to be Mr. Will Zalatoris. Yes, I said it, Will Zalatoris at 9,900. Look, 
like last week where Berger was my fade, Zalatoris is going to be the second highest owned player, at least as far as projections are concerned right now. I don't like that for a guy like this. I mean, he hasn't proven that he can win. Okay. So that's one thing. He's very new on tour. Okay. He's kind of learning his way. Now he's showing up well every single week, but I don't want to play Zalatoris as the second highest owned guy. Okay. I just don't want to do it. I think we need to pump the brakes a little bit. I'm giving him 82 points. Will Zalatoris will be the Boone's Farm fade of the week. Now, my mouth is really dry, so I'm about to take a little sip of this Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. <clears throat> Whew, that's good stuff. I tell you what, that screw cap did its job with that oxygen ingress rate. All right, let's talk about the pop the court play of the week. And for me, it is going to be Russell Knox at 7,800. I'm going to give him 91 points. He's got pretty decent course history. Two straight top 15s here a few years ago. He did miss the cut last year. Okay, I'm okay with that. I'm going to let that slide. But look, he's top 20 in the field in ball striking, top 20 in strokes gain approach. This is a course that is a, it is a definite second shot golf course with these small greens. You've got your irons into these greens, and Russell Knotts can do that. And you know what? If we get a bit of bad weather and wind, he's all in those conditions as well. I think that's important this week. So that gives me even more reason to play some Russell Knox at 7,800. And he's looking to be pretty low owned, somewhere around like 5 or 6% and GPPs on DraftKings, so I think that's pretty cool. Also, so Russell is going to be the pop the cork of the week. There you go. That is your FGS for the AT&T Pro. No am this week at Pebble Beach. I will be back next week with more wine knowledge like this week, which is pretty damn incredible if you think about it, and then some plays of the week, which hopefully will be also incredible. I'm out. Boom.